This video is about Greek colonization of the ancient world and its geography. Imagine being a Greek from a city-state like Athens. You don't have your own farm or opportunity at trade. An opportunity that might be open to you is leaving with a ship and starting a colony in a faraway land along the Mediterranean. As you sail into the wine-dark sea, you fear the wrath of the gods like Poseidon. With you, you bring the sacred flame from your hometown and hope for a brighter future over the horizon. What adventures and dangers are ahead of you? This video covers Greek travel by land, Greek travel by sea, Greek farming, Greek colonies, and Greek trade. Topic number one is Greek travel by land. Traveling by land was slow and difficult. Greece has rocky terrain and many mountains in its interior, so it was natural for people to travel by sea. Greece also has thousands of rocky islands that could only be accessed by the sea. Even today, Greece has a ferry system bringing Greeks and tourists back and forth between many isolated locations. People in different city-states in Greece were relatively isolated and this allowed them to operate with some independence. However, this isolation also created pressure for them to find new farmland and goods to trade. In other words, the Greeks colonized because they were constantly looking for greener pastures because of the limited farmland and natural resources in this beautiful land. Here are a few examples of the varied terrain in Greece. In part two, I will talk about Greek travel by sea. The Greeks did not use the compass to navigate, but instead they used the stars. The Greeks also did not have lighthouses to warn them of treacherous coastlines. Greeks were never far from water. The entire country is made up of peninsulas and islands. Three seas bordered Greek lands, including the Aegean, the Ionian, and the Black Sea. The Aegean and the Ionian seas are within the Mediterranean Sea. Sudden storms could put sailors in danger. Although Greek waters appear calm, sea storms can come out of nowhere. To avoid these hazards, Greeks traveled by day and close to shore. At night, they anchored in safe harbors. They navigated by the stars and gave offerings to the Greek gods for help. Topic number three is Greek farming. Many ancient Greeks were farmers. If you look at Greece, one thing you note is that there are no major rivers. The land is relatively dry and rocky, but the ancient Greeks still were able to farm. Crops that needed less flat land were grapes and olives. The Greeks produced vast quantities of high quality wine and olive oil. This made them rich because they could be preserved for a long time and shipped to other lands to trade. Another important product was honey. Many Greek farmers kept bees for honey production. Greeks primarily raised sheep and goats because cattle needed a lot of flat grassland. This provided milk and cheese for the locals. Pigs and chickens were also raised by many Greek farmers. This lack of farmland led to wars among many Greek city-states. Fourth on the list are Greek colonies. Greek colonies were established in Spain, France, the island of Sicily, Anatolia, southern Italy, North Africa and along the coasts of the Black Sea. This colonization period happened around 1000 to 650 BCE. A colony is a settlement in a distant place and was still under the control of that mother country in some capacity. Colonists took a flame from the original city's sacred fire so they could start a sacred fire in their new home. These colonies helped to spread Greek culture around the world. Citizens from these colonies could participate in Greek athletic games, build buildings with the similar architectural style, worship similar gods, and practice many of the same customs. Here are some examples of Greek colonies around the Mediterranean and elsewhere in the world. The last topic on the list is Greek trade during ancient times. Since many Greek city-states could not produce all the food and goods they needed, they traded with each other to acquire these things. Two main products that were traded 
by the Greeks were olive oil and Greek pottery. Here are a few examples of Greek pottery. Containers for olive oil were stored in pottery called amphora. In return, the Greeks traded for grain, timber, and metals from other civilizations or Greek colonies in Asia, other parts of Europe, and Africa. So in review of this week's Pepe list on the geography and settlement of ancient Greece, the topics discussed were the following. Travel by land, travel by sea, Greek farming, Greek colonies, and Greek trade. The next topic I'm working on is democracy in Greece. If you like this list, please subscribe to my channel for further updates.